What's going on guys, Shadowinja here, and today let's talk about Strand and Felwinter's Helm. This exotic helmet, I was not familiar with you at all. Like, yo, this shit cooks. But um, the reason why it cooks is because this provides a 30% debuff in PvE. And what that means is when you do a powered melee or finisher, you will basically weaken the enemy and this debuff is 30%. That is comparable to Tractor Cannon, Deadfall Tether, and Mobius Tether. Yeah, that's um, that's insane that you can have an equivalent of a super or an exotic power weapon debuff in your helmets. Now, the realistic way to use this in the rest of the game that's not Onslaught, it is a different story. Uh, things need to be a very ad dense for you to allow to use this against a boss, for example. And uh, if you're on ad clear, it can help with that as a warlock. But again, depending on how many warlocks you have, you may want to use a well radiance, especially if you guys are rotating in Crota and stuff like that. So I don't know how much end game viability this will have but in onslaught guys this is one of the best builds i have used in all of destiny for a mode like this and it is so fun so let's jump in and talk a little bit more about how fell winter's helm to be specific of what it says in the game so warlords and powered melee final blows create a burst of energy that weaken nearby targets and again this is a 30 percent debuff weaken finishers and final blows against more powerful targets increase the radius of the burst and the length of the weakening effect now the duration of this weekend is a little convoluted um basically you will get a weekend effect between 10 seconds and 20 seconds you can refresh this with more finishers for example but yeah the time duration is uh pretty damn good for an exotic helmet providing a 30 percent debuff but i think i've done uh, enough talking about this helm let's jump into the game and talk about the exact build mods seasonal artifact all that good stuff and uh even loadouts in this case for what you want to use so for one, I like the drip of my Warlock here. Uh, nothing too crazy. I don't really have much fashion to flex and say this is the godliest fashion of all time. But hey, so I love, you know, showing off my fashion in these build videos. But yeah, when it comes to loadout, we are rocking a complete strand setup. So our kinetic slot will be the Rufus Flurry. I have rerun rounds and frenzy here this is an incredible incredible auto rifle from root of nightmares highly recommended now we are using tessellation this is a pre-order bonus for the final shape i think the annual pass version will give you this but again this will definitely be of in the game at some point when the final shape comes out and some way i don't really know but i pre-ordered obviously the annual pass edition this will convert the energy type to match your subclass and this allows when you get kills to increase your grenade again as You'll see it's pretty important because you're using the grapple hook melee grenade. And then we're using my favorite LMG in the game, Circular Logic. It's strand. So as you see, three strand weapons to just unload, weaken, and then unraveling rounds. It is pretty damn insane. Now, when it comes to our Warlock subclass, the main thing here will be the grapple grenade. Why? Because the melee counts as a power melee and uh, it's way better than the arcane needle. But again... This isn't bad. It unravels and stuff like that. It's pretty damn good and I like it. But yeah, the grapple melee is pretty important. Now the aspects, mind swan invocation, uh, your grapple shackle and threadling grenade have enhanced functionality. And basically your grapple melee spawns three threadling eggs. And uh, this, this is awesome. You can also consume if you're using other grenades, but uh, yeah, in this case, we're just using uh, the melee spawning three threadlings, pretty damn good. Now we are also using weave walk uh pr press x to dodge while airborne to consume your melee energy and enter a weave gaining damage resistance from bands and players reactivate your air dodge and cast your rift to exit the weave while in weave your melee energy is drained and your and you generate pierce threadlings over time so this is more survivability i like this a lot but if you guys want to switch off to for example weaver's call be my guest but uh yeah the wanderer is also pretty good but yeah, I'm just using Weave Walk for survivability. We lose out a fragment slot, but again, if I was to change things up to get more fragments, you could use Weaver's Call. But again, I was using Weave Walk. It was helping me with my survivability a little bit. Now, in this case, I'm not using Dealing Damage Grenade, grenade Energy, which sucks. So I'll probably switch off and you'll see here the other stuff here. But when it comes to your fragment threat of evolution, threadlings travel further and deal additional damage. Important for our aspect. They also threat of finality finishers final blows create threadlings we're using a lot of finishers we create a lot of th threadlings those threadlings tackle on to the weekend people around yeah it's pretty damn fun and then we are using a thread of warding picking up a 
Orb of Power grants woven mail, helping us with some damage resistance. Not as great as it used to be, but still pretty good. But if you want to, you know, change a fragment, Threat of Generation will be the next fragment. In this case, I'm using three because of Weave Walk. But yeah, again, if you want to switch this to something else, be my guest, you'll get the fourth fragment slot and you'll use Threat of Generation. But yeah, that's the subclass. It is pretty juicy and I love it a lot. Now, the seasonal artifact, uh, since we're mainly strand based, uh, horde shuttle damaging unraveling targets with a weapon occasionally spawns threadlings. Pretty damn powerful. Uh, unraveling orbs picking up an orb of power grants strand weapons unraveling rounds. We'll be generating tons of orbs, guys. Do not worry. And then we're using our flame, fiber, and freeze uh, combined solar strand and stasis siphon mods into one. This could give you some loadout flexibility, all that good stuff. And then, yeah. Uh, Dragon's Bite is a artifact you can use. Uh, if I was to refund and do that, that's a great thing. Um, I was using a rocket, so that's why I was using Overload for those Overload champions on Onslaught during my time. But yeah, breaking a baton shield with a strand or stasis weapon has a chance to suspend or freeze. This has great synergy in this case because we're using a three strand loadout. But yeah, that's a seasonal artifact. Let's jump into the mods. We're using hands-on because of course. And then we're using Harmonic Siphon because... In this case, we're strand and it will have great synergy and allow for a little bit more potency on the generation of ores with our final weapons. But yeah, gain bonus super energy on melee kills. This is fun. Now we are using harmonic loader for the reload and then we're using grenade kickstart. We're generating uh, all these orbs. I want to get my grenade fast as possible and this will help with that. And then we are using fire power. Your grenade final blows creates orbs of power. I'm pretty sure this is for uh, grapple hook. I, I get confused sometimes, so it could be the other way. But yeah, this should work with your grab hook. I'm pretty certain it does. Uh, strand reserves, because why not? We're using harmonic reserves. We get three of them, get more LMG shots, best LMG in the game, circular logic. And then for our legs, we're using invigoration and innervation for those uh, orbs collections, helping with our regen, and then one strand weapon surge. And then one, two finisher for get our powered melee back, and then time dilation and bomber. But yeah, that's pretty much the build. Dim link down below for you guys to pull this and easily use in the game. Let's jump out and give you guys my closing thoughts. Yeah, this build, insane. I was not expecting the firepower to just be like this with Strand and Warlock. It was really making me question a shit ton of things as a Titan main. I was like, yo, do I really want to go back and be a Titan? I've been doing this shit for nearly 10 years, ever since the beginning of Destiny 1's beta. And, um... I might switch. I might be a Warlock main. All jokes aside, yeah, it actually did make me question, but I'm going to be a Titan main. Do not worry for my Titans. Well, I will not be going anywhere, but yeah, this is an incredible build. Um, we will later this week have a build video on the Void version of this. It is similar, different at the same time. Uh, the viability and survivability is also very different. So that's why I came out with this one first, because I do think this is the better version, but the void version of this is equally as insane and requires some different play style. But yeah, incredible nonetheless, least. but that's pretty much all I got to say on this build video. Leave your thoughts down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop this video a like helps out the video a ton. And for more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell to be notified when I do drop that content. But yeah, that's all I got to say in this one. Hope you guys have a good one. Shout out to you here and I'm out.